All right, first, I just want to welcome you guys. Uh, good to see you back. It means we're back into football, which is awesome. Uh, it's an exciting time of year. You know, we start up uh, Saturday, our first practice this Saturday, and we'll get uh, three in before spring break, which is, uh, which is exciting. Um, see, you know, it's a little early this year, but, uh, you know, the way the calendar falls with uh, spring break, with Easter, and our model of trying to get a, a week in before we get away for spring break uh, puts us in there. Plus, it gives... A little extra time for us, you know, uh, if you get an injury, that you can still make it back for the start of the season. So I think all those factors combined, um, I'm looking forward to the early start. I think our kids are ready. They've worked hard, and they're ready to roll. So I'm excited about that. I um, also wanted to make you aware, uh, you know, we have three mid-years here. I think you guys are aware of that. And, uh, um, you know, you have Sam Johnson, uh, Zion, um, who do I miss, Jason? Zion Johnson, uh, Ethan Williams. Yeah, Ethan Williams, Zion Johnson, uh, Isaiah and Isaiah Henderson. Um, Isaiah is a defensive lineman that you know from uh, uh, Matter Day down in South Jersey. Zion's a transfer from Davidson. Um, Ethan's from Maryland, and uh, Sam is from uh, uh, Detroit. Um, and you guys are aware of those guys from, from, from signing day, but they're here early and, and obviously getting a jump start on everything, which is fantastic. Um, Staff changes this year uh, on defense. Um, we're excited. Uh, Bill Sheridan will be, you know, you'll have a chance to talk to Bill. Bill will be coordinating the defense. Uh, Bill's got a great background, tremendous background as a coordinator in the NFL. Uh, been in every major college program, but he's coordinated the Tampa Bay Bucks, coordinator of the New York Giants, and he's going to do a fantastic job here uh, with our defense. Um, you know, Jim Reed will be uh, uh, coaching the defensive front with Antoine Smith. Uh, a new addition to our staff, um, uh, Eric Lewis, um, you know, will be, and you'll visit with him, Eric Lewis will be uh, coaching our secondary, and Eric comes to us with a wealth of experience in professional and college football. Um, Mike Bajakian uh, is our new offense coordinator. Um, I know you guys are aware of all this information. You'll visit with Mike. He's done just a great job coming in here and just has a tremendous knowledge, background, and demeanor to come in and uh, take take our system and our offense and, you know, and be able to uh, be able to uh, help shape it and, and tweak it and direct it and be able to just seamlessly work with our staff and our players and bring a high level of expertise at the quarterback position. So we're fortunate that we've got three changes and uh, you know two new people, one one change and elite coaches, great men, great husbands, great fathers, great role models for Boston College. So I'll let you visit with them um, on offense. Uh, you know we're excited about. Where we're headed this year, you know, we've got um, tremendous returning players here. Um, you know, it always starts, as you know, I've said with the quarterback, and uh, we've got a quarterback room, not just a quarterback, but a quarterback room. Mike will probably address that. Um, you, know, you know, I hear stuff like Anthony Brown, you know, last year's QB rating was the fourth best since 1996 at Boston College. I mean, that's pretty, that, that, that's pretty good numbers for a sophomore. He was a sophomore last year. Um, so, and then, you know, uh, E.J. Perry and Matt McDonald, Matt Vallecci, I mean, uh, and Sam Johnson coming in here. We have a room full of guys. It's a, quite a bit different than I can remember back, you know, seven years ago or six years ago. Um, so I'm certainly, uh, we're excited there. We have a running back room that may be the best in the, not maybe, it'll be the best in the conference. Um, obviously highlighted uh, by A.J., you know, not to take away from David Bailey and Travis Levy and, and, and you know, Ben Glines and, uh, you know, just just a great room. Up front, you know, people have asked me about taking, losing some guys up front. Yeah, I mean, you know, we lost Chris Lindstrom, who, you know, a lot of people were asking me why he was playing. Well, he's going to be drafted probably in the first or second round. But uh, um, Aaron Montero, um, you know, uh, we lose. But... Uh, you know, uh, John Baker, but part of recruiting, having a chance to be here, you know, with some with some longevity in six years, we you know we've recruited well, and we've got guys that I'm excited about coming in here right now. I mean, John Phillips has emerged to being a, a really outstanding player, and, and Ben Petrullo is an outstanding player, and Alec Lindstrom, 
is going to be elite at, at the center position. And, and uh, uh, Tony Palzola has waited for his opportunity to play here, and he is ready to play here, you know. Um, and then we have some unbelievable young players here a, as well. And uh, so it, it, it's, it, it's exciting. We're, we're not, our, our level of play at the offensive line will not drop off at all. I mean, and, 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 and I think I'm pretty qualified to make that statement. So we're going to have a great front. Our tight ends are, there's not a better tight end room in the country. What are we talking about here? I mean, we're going to lose a third round pick, fourth round, fifth round pick in Sweeney, but we've got draft picks in that room and not just one. So we're going to return several great tight ends, you know, and Jake Burt and Christian Garrison and Hunter Long and Caraba Drizzy and Ray Martin. I mean, there's not a shortage of those guys now. At the receiver position, Kobe is back, uh, who's an elite player in the ACC. Uh, we lost, you know, Mike and Jeff, but Ben Glines is 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 is, is, is playing, you know, both positions and is an elite player. And Travis Levy is now, by the way, going to play both positions. Uh, I mean, I mean, my, our mindset is, how are we going to have two really talented guys on the? Uh, get them all in the field. Put the best players on the field. Um, you know, Noah Jordan Williams will have a great year. C.J. Lewis will have a great year. I mean, um, Jelani Jenkins, we're really really excited about. So, you know. Uh, on offense, we've got skill firepower. We got at the quarterback, we got in the backfield, we got at the receivers, we got at the tight ends. We're gonna have a really good offensive line. So, you know, um, we're, we're excited about that. Um, on defense, you know, we have five players back that have started at least one game in their career. I mean, it's not like these guys haven't played; they have, and we're we're, we're fired up about that. Interiorly, you know, Jaleel Berry and, and TJ and, and Tanner. Um, we're, we're excited about those guys. They're, they they paid their dues, ready to play. I mean, those inside guys are going to be all over 300-pound guys that, that can play in this conference. We've got to replace the two edge rushers, and we're excited uh, you know, about about our guys. Brandon Barlow was playing really well at the end of last year, um, and uh, Marcus Valdez was playing really well at the end of last year, and Joe Lucchetti, we moved over there. Joe was an elite player coming to us. He was playing tight end. We moved in the defensive end. He is a uh, was a Division One basketball recruit. He's up and he's he's up to two high two fifties now. He's going to be two hundred sixty five pounds when we start the season. He's going to be um, everybody's going to say where did that guy come from? Okay, and he's going to be on the edge. The linebackers, you guys all know about our linebackers, uh, the depth that we have there um, that has been established depth now for some time, and uh, you know talk about Max Richardson and Isaiah McDuffie. And Isaiah will be out for the spring, still recovering from that knee injury, but he's doing fantastic. Um, uh, John Lamont, who's played a ton of football here. Dave, how about Davon Jones? And just a series of guys. And we, we have a bunch of linebackers that can play. And some young guys that are ready to really make their mark right now. And then in the back end, um, you know, we lost some guys in the back end. But Brandon Sebastian's back. He was a true starter last year. And Tate Haynes is ready to roll. And, and Tate Haynes may be the best athlete of all of them. Um, and, and we're excited about him, you know. Elijah Jones is, is a real up-and-comer, and Jason Matry, and just some guys that, that, that we, we are very excited about, you know. Um, I mean, another interesting deal, you know, to me is, um, you know, four DBs drafted since 2016. I mean, we've, you know, we came in here, one of the things we had to do at Boston College was increase our skill. I'd like to think we did that. I mean, four DBs drafted since 2016, that's pretty darn good. Uh, the running back that we have, the, you know, the, the quarterback, the receivers that we have, we have real ACC speed. So in the back end, we've recruited well, and we've developed guys, we, and we have to replace our safeties. And the guys like Nolan Borgeson and, and Medi Elitrek and, you know, um, uh, you know uh, ha have been here a while. Mike Palmer, Mike Palmer played a lot of football last year. So these are guys that can come in here and, and do a great job. And... Uh, we're very athletic, we have good speed, and we're talented back there. You know, yeah, we have to replace some guys, but that's what you do. You replace guys if you're recruited properly and you're coaching properly and you're developing properly and you keep moving forward. You know, that's that's what's interesting. And I think that's a reflection of a, a lot of things, you know. I mean, we've got a great commitment here uh, with our new facility, which is going to help immensely. I mean, another great deal that's come out, you know, bowl appearances in the Northeast since 2013. We, we're as high as anybody in, in that whole region. Boston College, five. Notre Dame, five. Penn State, five. Pittsburgh, five. West Virginia, five. Maryland, three. Rutgers, two. Syracuse, two. Connecticut, one. BC is right up there. We've been to five bowls in six years, and we'll make it six and seven. And so that's given us consistency. It has given us the chance to go recruit. We've got in facility enhancements. And uh, um, coupled with uh, winning, 
Uh, and, and we have star power marquee football names on our roster. We're going to have seven players in the combine. Seven in the combine. You know, dying for someone to talk about, you know, I, I, I sat in these, in, these, in these press conferences about, well, what do we know about this star player and that star player? Well, that's the real way you evaluate your recruiting. Is, and I'm proud of the fact and excited about the fact we have seven players going to the combine and we'll probably have somewhere between five and seven players drafted in the NFL draft and probably another three or four at least free agents coming out of here. Uh, and the talk of the Senior Bowl and the talk of the Combine has been Boston College. So um, I think these things have all worked together and give us an opportunity uh, to continue to develop and build our program. Uh, we've, got, we've got a great staff. You know, people come in, you know, and they, and they, and they try to rate our staff, and that's a, that's a compliment to our staff. And, and the key is, is the ability to keep bringing in high-powered people, and we've done that at a high level. And I'm excited about that. Fun to be around these kind of guys, to work with them. Uh, and, and our players, uh, you know, we turned, uh, Frank Prino had a chance to move on, as you guys know, to go down to Tennessee Titans. And Scott McClafferty came in, and Scott had been with us. And, I mean, Scott is having a huge impact on our strength program right now. So, you know, there's a lot of continuity, um, a lot of positive things. We've got a great work ethic. I, the guys that have come through here have really set a high standard for our players and our team in terms of their attitude, their work ethic, and their commitment to football and what it takes. And they're all working at that really, really hard. So it's going to be fun. Um, granted, there's always the challenges of breaking some inexperience and some young guys in, but there's also a really high excitement level about that. That's, that's what's fun about coaching. And, uh, you know, if you've got the right guys in the right spots, you still can get a lot done. And uh, we all know what the, where those spots are, and we have them. So. With that, I'm happy to answer anybody's questions. Can you guys just raise your hand? Start out with Rich. Thank you. Just coach, uh, just uh, what were the after effects of the, you know, December 26th? And I mean, are the kids hungrier now? Or what effect did that have on them? Yeah, Rich, that's a good question. I mean. As I told you before, if you were in that locker room, the, the, the level of disappointment and the sadness for the seniors was pretty high. But I think that there is a, a sense of a, a, of a hunger. I mean, we prepared so hard for that bowl game, and we were so ready to play that bowl game and felt like you know the rug came out from under us. But uh, um, you know, I think it set the stage for a lot of these young guys to get a tremendous amount of work. You know, when you, every year when you go into these bowl games, it gives you that extra practice time. And I think we utilized it well this year. And we had to held a lot of the older guys out. And a lot of these younger guys got a chance to really work. And I think they're hungry to make their mark. And I think coming off that game, you know, or the lack thereof of that game, really, uh, really had a, a tremendous uh, uh, jolt in terms of, you know, uh, dying to get back on the field type of thing. Yeah. Who will be in condition uh, in competition to be Michael Walker next year? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think there's several guys that, you know, Jason Matry is a young guy who's actually out for the spring, but uh, you know that, that that had a high skill level there. We've got a couple guys coming in uh, that that are all, you know, like you know, Zay Flowers is electric. Um, he's an electric guy. Um, you know, Travis Levy will. will for sure, you know, have pieces uh, there, and uh, you know, so you'll you'll see those guys uh, in there. Um, there'll probably be five or six guys vying for those spots, you know. Um, obviously, trying to find the, the guys that have not only that great speed but that unbelievable make you miss, you know. And I think we don't have a lack of those guys right now, so we'll we'll plug one of those guys in. Uh, just uh, quickly, um, can, could you uh, expand a little bit on what uh, is keeping Jason out? And also, um, were there any guys during the bowl practices that stood out to you who maybe weren't playing a lot last year that m might make a leap? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, EJ Perry had an unbelievable bowl prep. Hunter Long was phenomenal. Uh, Alec Lindstrom, fantastic bowl prep. 
Anthony Palazzoli, Anthony Palazzolo did a great job in bowl prep. Jason Matry had gotten hurt. He's, that's that injury that he had to have fixed. I thought uh, Elijah Jones did a great job in bowl prep. I thought the young secondary guys, the DBs back there, Mike Palmer um, and Tate Haynes, I thought those guys, Jelani Jenkins had a chance to really shine as a receiver in the bowl prep. I thought Noah Jordan Williams uh, did a great job. I'm really excited about Noah Jordan Williams at the receiver position. Uh, we, we, you know, we have been for a while. I think he's about ready now to, to pop. Uh, um, I thought Jaleel Berry and, uh, was a guy that really has come a long way on the defensive front. Bill can elaborate on that a little bit more. I mean, he got himself in shape. He can run. He's, he's trim. I think that guy has a chance to really, really go. And of course, um, I told you, uh, Brandon Barlow came a long way at the end of the year, and, and I think so did Valdez and, and Joe Lucchetti. Joe Lucchetti had a chance to prepare like a starter in the bowl prep. So I know I'm saying a few, but those guys all got a lot of work. Mm -hmm. How Dave, would you? You know, he, 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 you know David is going to be an unbelievable tailback, and uh, he had a lot of work in, in the bowl prep. And, he looks great. He's trimmed down a little bit. He's 250-something pounds, and now he's down to like 240, which is still a huge back. But I think David Bailey is uh, a real talent, and uh, he had a really good bowl prep. You know, sometimes you watch these freshmen; it takes them a while, you know, and then all of a sudden they start coming. Like AJ is a freshman. It happened in the second half of his freshman year, but um, all those guys, you can see them starting to come. You know, you know another guy, uh, Finn Durston. Finn Durston went from like 330 to 305, and uh, he looks he looks fantastic. Uh, Tyler Vrabel, he looks fantastic. Those are two guys you can really see emerge this year. You know, they're 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 emerging. Yeah. Yes, sir. How would you assess Hamp Cheever's NFL draft prospects? Well, I mean, I think Hamp could have benefited being here another year uh, to be transparent with you, but uh, I mean, Hamp, Hamp felt this was in his best interest. Uh, he's an explosive guy. He's going to have to get bigger. Um, uh, he's got really good ball skills. He's got really good coverage ability. He made a lot of plays. I think he was just starting. You're starting to really see the emergence of Hamp. Um, so I, I think he'll do well in the combine. Um, and I would think he'd have a great opportunity um, ahead of him. We're certainly all cheering for him, and, 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 and you know, uh, but you know, it's, uh, you get you get you, know, you go into that arena, and the margin for error is small. So uh, I hope he has a great, um, great workout here at Pro Day and a great and a great combine. Uh, he's a terrific kid, and uh, we wish him nothing but the best. Yes, sir. What's going on? Sir? Um, just curious, how unique uh, is it for you and your tenure here to have a defense that isn't as experienced as it has been in the past, and what challenges might come with that? And also, what roles do, do, do Phil and Jim have to kind of play and kind of maybe accelerate the process a little bit? Well, Bill's running it. You know, Bill's the defensive coordinator, and he's running that show. And yeah, I mean, I think, I think, you know, really, uh, I think really, um, homing in on who we feel are the guys for each position throughout spring, really making sure we're doing what fits their ability and their talent. I think whether you're on offense or defense, I think every year I think you're in a foot race to figure out, even to say, look, don't you already know? You, you do, but to really you know, enhance the guys that you feel need to be on that field, what do they actually really do best? And I think that'll be the process of spring ball. I think continuing to develop and work fundamentally, both sides of the ball, special teams, but in, 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 in skill set. But in addition to that, you know, I think all the factors of watching guys, you know, you're going to play man, you're going to play zone, right? We all know that. We're going we're gonna to have both in our but, – but, you know, who's a little better here, who's a little better here, and, 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 and maybe – the percentages of what you play, I think you come out of spring ball with a little better feel. But ask Bill. Bill will be up here in a minute, and I think that's a great question for him. And I think he'll go in detail for you on that. But uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's accurate. You know, I think you you, you are identifying a little bit. I think. 
you know, and you also got hungry, hungry guys. I mean, watching this over the years sometimes to me, I mean, you know, um, I think sometimes it's exciting with young guys and haven't had their chance yet, you know. They're not in that mode sometimes. Sometimes you get older guys and they got a lot on their mind, <laughs> you know. And sometimes you get some of these other guys, they got one thing on their mind. You know, they, 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 want, to, they want to emerge. And, and, and they're not, they're, they're more aggressive sometimes. So it's exciting. It's a trade off. You know, you got experience, I mean, you got some inexperience, but a lot of these guys have played. It's not like they haven't played, and they've played at a high level against really good teams. Um, but, you know, there, there's that, that, that exists. I mean, that, that, that turnover and that period of adjustment, if you will, it exists. And that's what spring is about. I'm not going to minimize the fact that. We lost potentially a first-round draft pick at one end and another draft pick at the other end and a draft pick in the back end. And I'm not going to minimize that. I mean, but I'd like to think that in the making are the next round of guys that are going to come up and, and, and be really productive players. You know, are, are they going to be a second or a first-round pick? I mean, I, I don't know that. You know, but um, certainly have an opportunity to be very, very talented and, and, and play with great synergy together. I don't know. You know, it's a, you know, it's it, it's a good question. Um, you know, I think one thing that I think I made a point to you guys before, kind of along those lines, and, and is you know, here it's all about being aligned as a team. Like I'm never like into this. Not you didn't really ask me this, but. You know, oh, the the defense, and you know they're going to dominate the offense, and that's all not that, that does not lead to team development. So it's my job to make sure that, you know, however it starts or however it finishes, that all three phases work hand in hand together so that they can develop. You know, it's that's why like it's never about like you know it's not Steve Adazio's team, it's not Mike Pajakian's offense, it's not. Bill Sheridan's defense. It's the Boston College football team. It's the Boston College offense. It's the Boston College defense. So that we can always be working together in synergy to develop our team. So I don't know in spring. I mean, you'd say on paper there's a little more experience coming back on offense. But in the same breath, I, you've thought those things before, but you know, you just don't know. And, 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 and I think at the end of the day, we've got good players, good coaches, and I think it'll be a good, healthy competition and a good, healthy experience on the field. And it's my job to make sure that that's, it stays like that so that if one side needs a little more development, it can develop and it doesn't get choked. You know what I mean? And, 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 and I think as a head coach, if you, don't, if you don't watch that, that can stymie a piece of that team. And all three phases are equally important. And they don't all come together exactly at the same time. So there's, I think, a, a real conscious effort to make sure that that happens and what I love on our staff is there's no egos on our staff and it's not about like Mike would stand up here and tell you listen I'm, I'm you know I want to make sure our defense has everything they need and Bill will talk about I want to make sure that our offense has everything they need and special teams is going to fit right with our offense and our defense and it won't be about like Bill saying well I got to have this and you know even if that's not good for the offense it doesn't work that way in our staff room and that's a, a really a credit to the coaches we have because it's not like that everywhere just not like that everywhere, but it is here. Coach, you look back at the totality of last season, the you know the ups and downs and the big wins, tough losses. How would you just sort of describe that? Yeah, I mean, well, I, you know, I, I look at it through these eyes. Um, obviously, you know, you're always striving. Our goal is to compete and win a, a conference championship, right? And I said that to you, and that's what I believed. And you know, in the tenth, I think it was the tenth game of the year. In the tenth game of the year, I think we were seven and two, right? We were playing Clemson here on game day. We were seventeenth in the country. At in the tenth week of the season, we were seven and two on game day. Seventeenth in the country, playing Clemson for the conference championship. Well, if they sign me up for that right now, I'm taking that again right now, right? That's that's not bad at that point in time. Now the outcome. The outcome was not where we wanted it to be, but you know, I think, you know, in the same breath, the outcome wasn't where it wanted to be. Were a lot of people playing Clemson. You know, I saw the last two games of that year against Alabama and Notre Dame, and I say we played them every bit as good, if not better, without our starting quarterback. But the reality of it is, is we did not win that game. 
So in week 10, we fell short of our goal, which was to compete and win a, a conference championship. Um, I would say to you, after that game, uh, we were very disappointed in the next week. That was a game that we felt we dominated that game and lost that game. Um, and, uh, and then we played an outstanding Syracuse team with a veteran quarterback who's one of the more elite players in the country. So um, we ended up with seven wins. We ended up with a chance to play in a bowl game for eight wins. Um, would I like that to have been better? Sure. But I thought that was still another outstanding season. And, uh, but we're, our goal is to do better than that. Um, and we want to compete for a conference championship, realizing what we have to go through, to, who we have to go through to get there. I mean, we're not oblivious to that. But I, I feel like we can compete with anybody on our, on our schedule. Um, but you, I don't have to tell you guys who a couple of those teams are. You know, like I said, you saw it for yourselves. Um, so we need to continue to grow. We need to, get, to continue to get better. I need to do a better job. And, 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 and I think that we need to continue to fight to finish stronger. Um, and I felt very confident that we would have finished strong in that bowl game. Uh, and I'm, I'm not a guy that gets up and just says stuff to say it. I mean, I feel like we had an outstanding opportunity and we're highly prepared and we're really on the mark in that game. So we got to get back to work and get going. We're in a big time conference. And that's life in the big time conference. You're going to get some that, that you know, maybe people thought you weren't going to get. And, uh, um, and the object is, is the, to get more, <laughs> to, to get more. Um, so, you know, moving on to 2019, we got a challenging schedule ahead of us, and uh, but it's an exciting one. And uh, we've got a bunch of players that are hungry, have played a lot of football, and we have a lot of talent at the right positions, and I think we'll have a chance to have an outstanding team. Anybody else? One more for Steve. Yeah. Uh, Coach, you mentioned that E.J. Perry had a great bowl preparation. Sam Johnson coming in, one of the best quarterbacks in the nation coming out of this class. Anthony Brown having an outstanding uh, season last year. Do you see Anthony Brown coming in as your guy again this year? You know, um, yeah. I mean, I always feel that he, he's the starter. Um, I mean, and he's done a phenomenal job, and he, and he had an outstanding year. But having said that, we're going to compete. Mike's going to get up here and talk about it. He's coming in here. Mike, Mike the, I, you know what I, the beautiful thing sometimes? You have new coaches come in. Everybody starts – from the same spot, and uh, and I love that. And I think it just creates a really great competition because he's going to evaluate it the way he sees it, and and I've told him that I want him to do that. So I think that's great. So there's going to be some real healthy competition. I mean, Matt McDonald, all of them. I mean, if I'm a quarterback right now, I'm excited. You know, I'm fired up. I got a chance. I got someone to come in here. I got a. I want to show what I can do. Um, I think if your quarterback is a guy that wants to rest on what's perceived that he is, call it your laurels for lack of a better word to say then you're not really a true vicious competitor. Because if you're a real competitor, you never feel like that. You always feel like you got, you got an edge to you and you got something to prove. And I would say to you that all those guys feel that way. And I think uh, Mike is going to be the kind of guy that is going to um, embrace them and challenge them. And, and I think I'd say they're all excited for that. You know, It's going to bring the best out in all of them. Uh, it's a new beginning. Fantastic. Same in the back end with Eric. I mean, he's come in here. It's a clean slate. That's cool. It's great. You know, and... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to see what these, how these guys, what their, what their assessments are. I'm excited about it, you know. I like a little edge. I just, anybody doesn't want to be too comfortable, you know. And, and I, think that's, I think that's good. And, and there'll be a little edge, and it'll be nice, you know. Bill, Bill's going to look at it through a different lens. I mean, that's good. He's fired up, he'll tell you. Yeah. I'm excited for you guys to talk to those guys. You don't need to talk to me. You hear the same stuff from me. You get to talk to those guys. It's a lot better for you than talking to me anyways, you know. So I want to hey, appreciate it, guys, really. You guys are awesome. I mean that, you know. And, 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 and I know you got a tough job to do, too, but you do a great job. And appreciate you being here today. And hope you're as excited as we are for 2019, okay? All right, go Eagles. Bill Sheridan, Coach.
Very briefly, um, it is most definitely my honor and great privilege to be uh, in charge of the defense and be the defense coordinator here, so couldn't be more excited. Our staff, uh, in the time that we've been together, before we got together with our players shortly after recruiting, we, we kind of put together a couple ideas about things that we're going to really try to hang our hat on and build around. And the first one uh, immediately was we talked about let's improve daily. So that's something that uh, each of our players on a daily basis right now, what's in front of them? Don't worry about next season. Don't even worry about spring practice right now. Improve daily when we're in our, our meetings, we're in our workouts, that kind of stuff. So I think that's a great theme, and we're going to carry that all the way through the next bowl game. The second thing we wanted to maintain that we, I think we definitely have this on our defense, is um, both physical and mental toughness. We, we definitely believe in and want to physically wear out our opponents. Uh, there's no getting around that in football. There's all kinds of schemes, and I know everybody likes to sling the ball around the park and, and all that stuff, but it still comes down to lining up across some people and physically and wearing them out and imposing your will on them. And we take pride in that, and we want to definitely maintain that, along with fanatical effort. And I, I take great pride when I watch our guys on film and we're lining up against other teams that may or may not have similar or maybe possibly sometimes superior personnel. And we're having success in winning games because our, of our fanatical effort. And that's how we describe it to our guys. The last thing, uh, more specifically to our defense and where we think we need to improve on, you know, we keep um, different um, statistics, you know, categorically, you know, rushing and passing and scoring and all that stuff. And in, in many of the major categories that we we keep track of that means something to us, you know, we finished like maybe in the top third of the NCAA. You know, there's 120 some teams playing 1A football. We were, you know, 30th, 35th, and that kind of stuff. But the one thing that, and it's super critical, I know you guys will appreciate this, is uh, we thought our third down defense needs to improve, right? It's a very, very critical. Uh, area of, of football and we always talk to our guys there's two ways to get the ball back for our offense one is to take the ball away and obviously you know if you can get two takeaways a game you'd be in the you'd definitely be in tops in the country in regards to turnover ratio but the second way you can get the ball back for your offense is stop teams on downs and make a punt and so that's an area both statistically and just as we look at it, we, we definitely recognize we need to and want to do a better job, and that will definitely be a point of emphasis through our spring practice. But those are kind of the three things that we, we talk to our guys about. We will regularly, we will daily, and, uh, and things that we want to hang our hat on, and obviously the third down stuff, a statistical area that we want to improve on. Questions for Bill? Yeah, by the way. Don't do the microphone. That's not even working. We, microphone for this room? Come on. Go ahead. Fire away. So with so many jobs wide open, from your experience, what do you look for in kids? And what what did, can they do to separate themselves from the competition that is going to turn into? And you, you're referring to guys we have on our team. Yeah. Yeah, very good, very good question. And Steve alluded to this a little while ago, and it is – it is kind of a nice, refreshing thing. We don't have a lot of returning starters, right? I know we, we had five guys that have started, but really, like, we have four returning starters from our normal 11, right? We got two linebackers, Tanner in the front and Brandon Sebastian in the back end. So, you know, we've got really seven positions, and, and, and even in spring, because Duff won't be playing in spring, we got seven positions wide open. So... I'm encouraging all of our position coaches when we start practicing on Saturday to get everybody in, you know, rotate guys through. We're not, we don't have to play Virginia Tech at the end of the month. We're not getting ready for them. We want to see who can play football, and we're going to try to keep it simple for them schematically as well so that they can do that. But so what we're looking for, guys, is, I mean, you have to have guys that can execute. You know, if they're, if they're dysfunctional and they can't execute basic calls and responsibilities within the defenses, it's going to be very difficult for them to get them on the field. But to answer your question, the number one thing we're looking for is guys who are competitive. And I know that sounds very broad-based and, and very trite to say, well, yeah, isn't everybody competitive? No, there's, there's guys that are more competitive than others. And so we're going to get get guys out there and let guys have an opportunity through 15 spring practices to demonstrate how physically competitive they are. And our hopes are to get the best 11 most competitive guys on the field come, come the fall season. No microphone. I know. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I don't even. I'm even talking to it. So I hear you. Um, 
I'll right. sing it to it. But. Uh, I got another. Um, I was, what's the, how does the dynamic shift or change at all with being with Jim in the different roles? And does that, does that make sense? Or? Yeah. Well, uh, the defensive coordinator is responsible for putting together the scheme that the defense is going to run and execute. And the defensive coordinator's role is to be the lone voice to the entire defense when not only explaining that, but talking about any other intangible things like the first opening comments I mentioned. A position coach is responsible primarily for the players that he's coaching and how they perform. Do you guys feel, I mean, how does the, in the working environment, do you guys feel bounce ideas off each other? How does that dynamic change or alter that? Yeah, that part won't have changed at all. It's just that I'll be making the final decision because somebody has to, or you'll be here till 2 o'clock in the morning bantering around ideas. But, no, oh yeah, we have totally democratic policy on our staff. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not dictating anything. No, I rely on the defensive staff for contributions, whether it's scheme, technique, of course. Yeah. And also, I mean, I, I guess Steve, uh, it's kind of a unique situation. I mean, do you have to, you know, step into the role? Do you have to kind of identify? Like last year, you knew who your guys, you could point out who your guys were, so do you kind of have to identify who's going to be, you know, like who's going to be the real? You say because we're going to be inexperienced? Yeah. I mean, do you, is, do you have to identify some of your guys in terms of who's going to be what, in what type of role on your defense? Right? Yes. And that's what we're going to be doing through 15 spring practices. Yeah, we don't, I mean, we're going to line up this Saturday with a starting group. But that could change midway through spring ball. It could change at the end of spring ball, you know, each individual position. But, yeah, when we line up on Saturday, we're going to put out there what we project. If we had to play Virginia Tech Saturday, we would put who we think are guys with the most experience that have actually played and been honorable. But, yeah, we're going to take all spring and even fall camp to find out who's going to fill those seven vacant starting jobs on defense. You know what I mean? But yeah, we'll, we'll put out a first group on Saturday, you know, projection, but it may be different two weeks from now and different at the end of spring and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we would. Like, like look, the four guys I mentioned, like Tanner, right, he, he started for sure, Max for sure, Isaiah, but he'll be out for the spring, and then Brandon Sebastian on the back end. Those guys were, they were regular starters. They play all the time. But I just share this with you because you're asking a legit question. Like, the stuff about, like, you know, having a voice and being a leader and all that, you know what's the most important thing? that they are absolutely lining up and kicking the crap out of the people they're playing on the field. Not, not, the, not how cool they talk when everybody huddles up and into practice. That's so, that stuff is really moderately insignificant. But, yeah, those guys, if I didn't say anything to them, they would assume those roles. How come? Because they played over 600 snaps last year. And when we line up on Saturday, they're going to be the only guys that have ever started for us before. So you don't even have to say anything to those guys. They'll, they'll take care of that. And some will do more than others because that's, that's just innately in their personality. You know what I mean? But that's, that's not like a monumental, important thing for us. We've got to try to find who can play football good. And that's who we've got to try to get on the field. You know? Yeah. I would probably echo the same thing Steve said. I mean, I would advise him to come back. He could just be another year more physically mature. He was a very good football player. Obviously, he felt he was going to be in a draft position, so he elected to do that. And, and the same thing, I wish nothing, nothing but the best for Hamp. I, I'm a Hamp fan, you know what I mean? But, yeah, I would, I would come back. And, and, and honestly, not just for selfish reasons. Of course, we'd love to have him back. He's a starting corner. But, yeah, I just think he, a year of physical maturity would have helped him. But... He obviously got information that he will be taken in the draft, so that's why I did it. Yeah. I'm curious, in the 
in terms of I mean, things as close as all the offices are in this conference, the best teams also have just defense. Is like, just like, is there something you have to do, I don't know, schematically to kind of address how ridiculous some of these offenses can be in this conference and around the country? Like, is there something like consistent throughout like a lot of the better defenses that kind of can offset some of the explosiveness of some of the offenses? Yeah. Well, I'm going to answer it two ways. The one consistent thing about the really, really good defenses, they have like fantastic players. Yeah, they're they have spectacular future NFL players on their on their team. That's why they're good. And then the second part, you know, as far as schematically, how do you how do you combat the explosiveness? We're doing that every day, all day in our office. That's what we're doing, trying to figure out how to stop the X's and O's. Take our X's and O's and apply them to what people are doing, either in run game or more explosively, obviously, probably in the passing game. How can we slow them down? How can we contain it, cover it, put pressure on the quarterback, fit up the runs with all the gun run stuff and quarterbacks running the ball as well and all that stuff. So, yeah, we're, that's, we're doing that all the time, you know, regardless of – their personnel are all, or our personnel, right? We're always scheming to do the very best job we can to stop people, but that's definitely one of the one consistent themes of great defense they have great players. Oh, yeah. No, not good players. Great players. Yeah. Take two more to build. Is there any uh, difficulty in that you can modify the most physical guys and the guys that you know, play the hardest when it's in a practice you know, format? It, it, do you get anything more when you, when you go to a scrimmage format, or is, is, or is it all sort of you're just sort of evaluating at this stage and you won't really know until, you know, until, until? That, that, that is a good question. And because we can't and we don't, we don't do a lot, a lot of live tackling scrimmages. I mean, you, just, you get guys hurt. And I know 85 scholarship sounds like a lot, but, you know, you get guys hurt and you're too deep, you're playing younger guys or lesser players so we don't do a lot of live tackling and scrimmaging and that kind of stuff and I believe in that I don't, I don't think you should do that um, so we got to make evaluations off of everything up to that point but and and to me it's it's relevant it's it, it's not like well when it goes live these guys are going to really turn it on and the guys that look good when we're not tackling are going to look less no Oh, we're just we're not trying to take the ball carriers and receivers to the ground in practice. You know, we're trying to keep everybody up. But so I don't I don't think that's as relevant. And, and honestly, you it can't be nowadays because in this day and age, you just you don't do live scrimmaging and tackling to the ground. I mean, we might do it once once a week in spring ball, maybe once a week in uh, fall camp, and that's only like for a particular period. We would not do a live tackling scrimmage for sixty minutes. That's not going to happen. You know, we kind of quick whistle it and try to keep guys up. So I don't think it is that much different. And it can't be anyways nowadays because you got to keep guys up. You know what I mean? Good question, though. Bill, thank you. Appreciate yeah, great, it. Great, great. Well, uh, Mike Vajayki, you can come up next. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Um, Mike, you're the head coach. Well, I'll just start off by saying uh, – how, how appreciative I am to Coach Adazio for the opportunity to be here. I know growing up in New Jersey, going to college on the other side of the state here in Massachusetts, Boston College always had an aura about it that, that you couldn't put your finger on, but you knew was special. So when the conversation with Coach started about the opportunity to come here and then it started to materialize further, and I did my research, uh, it wasn't hard to see that that aura um, was real and 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 being here now about five weeks uh being around the players being here at the university um it's become evident to me that that this is a special place and i'm i'm super excited to be here uh excited to be working with our players with our staff and um and proceed on with spring ball because uh i, I I'm, I'm i think great great days are ahead and uh i can't wait to get to work with our guys here in about another week or so Sure. I, I think the transition from high school to college is vast. You know, as as good as a player may be, um, you know, the Trevor Lawrences from from uh, from Clemson are, are 
are rare. Uh, so there, there's always um, there's always a transition that's got to occur. Uh, I, I can't tell you much about Sam Johnson uh, per NCAA rules. I, I've yet to even watch any of our guys throw. So I, I don't, you know, I, I, I've seen what I've seen on video and game video, which is mostly consisted of, of snaps of Anthony Brown and, and, and EJ. Um, as for the other guys, they're a little bit of an enigma to me. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm looking forward to spring ball starting on Saturday and, and watching them throw for the first down. I can tell you this, in, in the, the interaction I've had with Sam, I'm very impressed with his intellect, his ability to process quickly. Uh, he's picked up quite a bit very quickly, and, and uh, that, that's a testament to, to his intelligence, to his hard work, but also, frankly, to, to the environment the other quarterbacks have created to help bring him along. So uh, we'll, we'll see what we have when, when we get out on the field, but, um, you know, but uh, there, th that is a big step and a big transition. Um, and, and he seems ready to attack that. Doc, Anthony Brown, can he kind of, kind of grow as a more of a dual threat quarterback? I know he had a knee injury and his coach didn't let him run last, last year, but do you see him kind of more in that ACC prototype dual threat quarterback role? Uh, again, from what I've seen on video and what I've seen in the workouts that we've witnessed, he's, he's big, strong, fast. Uh, he has the athletic ability to uh, be effective with the ball in his hand as a rusher. Uh, I know the injury was significant. And frankly, uh, I don't know. I know he missed all spring ball last year and even uh, parts of training camp, if I'm not mistaken. So I think he's finally getting to a point where he has confidence in, in, his, uh, in his physical ability and his leg. And, and um, sure, I, I think uh, the, the, the snaps that I've seen on video from last season where he had the option to pull the ball and, and be a threat with the ball in his hands. He was very effective, so uh, he can only continue to grow in that regard. Uh, I'm very curious. Can you talk us through kind of the, just how the opportunity was negotiated? You felt like it was just a quick turnaround for you. Sure. That, that's the profession, for sure. Um, so interestingly, you know, I really didn't know anybody on staff here. Uh, I, sh I shouldn't say that. I knew Scott Leffler. Um, so Coach Adazio received my name, uh, and he went to Scott and asked Scott what Scott knew about me. And then uh, Bill Sheridan, uh, we actually overlapped a couple of decades ago. No, not at Tampa. Back when I was a graduate assistant at Michigan, Coach Sheridan was just hired. Uh, he may not even remember this. This, uh, this was back in 2000 and 2001. So we, we were there for two months together. But then Bill's son, Nick Sheridan, who, who's a coach at the University of Indiana, was a graduate assistant for me. So I, I've gotten to know Coach Sheridan over the years. So I think uh, the conversation initially with Coach Adazio started um, as an introduction. He did his research. I did my research. Then we met, um, and uh, we hit it off. I mean, I, I tell you what, again, I, I, didn't, I had never worked with Coach Adazio before. Um, the research I had done was all positive. Uh, but when we met initially, just him and I, uh, it, it very quickly became apparent that we're very like-minded um, in how we want to play the game. Uh, and then schematically, it seemed to be a good fit. And then I came up and met the staff, again, none of whom I had worked with before. Uh, and, and I got to say, uh, my, my research had all been positive, but since I've been here, they've been great. Uh, Coach White, Coach Leonard, uh, Phil Troutwine, uh, Rich Gunnell, th those guys um, are outstanding coaches, good people. And uh, I'll tell you what, they, they've been fun to work with and have been a tremendous help to me in my transition. And I'm curious about the conversation, if any, you might have had with Scott, because when he inherited the offense, like, it was a completely different type of challenge. You know what I mean? Sure. But you get sort of at a point where you have a quarterback, you have one of the best running backs in the country, uh, some wide receiver, receivers, some, you know, some challenges on offensive line. But what do, you, what do you see now, and what do you guys talk about, about just the progress the offense has made and what it can Sure, and, and that, that was a big, a big part of our conversation was about the personnel. And, uh, you know, he, he gave me his input, which was valuable, but at the same time, I also did my research with, I watched video. I watched a bunch of video before I ever even talked to Coach Adazio and before I ever met with the staff uh, a week later. Um, and then I also talked to people in our personnel department with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And, and everything everybody had said seemed to align. 
and, and, and what I saw on video was consistent with what everybody had said. So that was a big part for me uh, besides hitting it off with Coach Adazio and the offensive staff, knowing that there were pieces in place from a, from a player standpoint to be successful, um, that, that, was, that was attractive to me uh, about Boston College. when you talked to Steve, what were some of the biggest things that you guys agreed upon? Sure. Um, my background as an offense coordinator had been one of being involved in an up-tempo offense. And um, here, we move very fast. That's, you know, Co Coach Sheridan talked about relentless effort and toughness and physicality. Well, to me, that plays hand in hand with playing with tempo. You know, if we can wear down our opponent, and, and physically dominate them uh, and make conditioning a factor, I think that's important. So I, I've always placed a high, high, high importance on effort. Well, obviously, Coach Adazio, um, number one, with his background as an offensive line coach, has stressed that. And then number two, as a head coach, you can see it permeate all the positions. So in watching the video, that, that you know, I watch the scheme and I watch the personnel, but I pay close attention to the effort level of the players. Um, and, and our players are more than willing to, to, play, the, to, to play their butts off. So um, that was number one, playing with tempo. Number two, uh, in, in my time in Tampa, uh, we, we had some good tight ends. And, and so, um, you know, I, I had been along my travels, you know, when I was at the University of Cincinnati, uh, we, we had Travis Kelsey was, was our tight end there, and we had another tight end named Adrian Robinson, uh, another guy named Blake Annan, all, all three of which were NFL players. Um, and they became an important part of our offense. But when I went to Tampa Bay, and uh, I, I learned a lot about how to utilize an, a, a tight end more effectively in the offense. So between playing with tempo and then knowing that uh, we, we have a room full of tight ends who are all good players, and we live in, in what I call 12 personnel and are able to, to play two to three tight ends at a time, a majority of the time, that, that was attractive to me. So. Um, you know, the effort, the tempo, uh, the, the, the tight end position in particular, um, I felt like I could, I, I could come in and transition easily into what they were doing here already. Sure. To me, th there's a bunch of different guys. And, and <laughs> you know, when I first talked to Coach Adazio, uh, he said, we have five to six tight ends, all of whom will play. And, 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 you know, I said, okay. And, and, and again, I'd watch a bunch of video, but because I don't know the personnel and who's returning, who's leaving, all that, I didn't really pay close attention to that. Um, but then since I've been here and we've been watching cut-ups and, and dissecting it, uh, it, you know, Hunter, Hunter Long is an extremely athletic, rangy, fast player. Uh, Jake Burt uh, is, is a guy that, that to me, does it all. Now, both those guys, and, and, and again, being in the NFL where, where we had specialists, you know, you, you have your blocking tight end, your receiving tight end, to have the guy that can do it all is, is those guys are valuable, okay? But when you look at Hunter, and you look at Jake, and you look at Christian Garrison, okay, and, and, and you look at, um, you know, even, uh, I already mentioned Jake, Christian, Hunter, um, uh, Karab Idrizi, you know, and, and uh, there's one that I'm forgetting, and I, I can't believe I'm forgetting him because he's, yeah, there, there, there's a ton of them. Ray Martin's another guy, you know, and, and it's funny, as we were watching cut-ups, as a staff, I kept saying, who's number so-and-so? Who's number so-and-so? And it was a different tight end, and blocking, receiving, running down the field, playing with great effort, uh, we have a bunch of guys in that room that can do it all. And, and, and so, you know, we don't necessarily have, yeah, some guys might be better at being an inline tight end. Other guys might be better at being, you know, your H-back move type of guy. But they all have the flexibility and the skill set uh, to, 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 to play different roles. And, and that was pretty exciting to me. It's kind of a misconception that tempo means passing. But did you actually have a better tempo, up-tempo offense with a back like Dylan? Does that break down defenses? I, I, I think so. You know, uh, part of... Uh, part of our philosophy is always, hey, build the scheme around your best personnel. I, I think offensively, defensively, special teams, that's the goal of any coach. And, and, and so, um, 
you know, our, our offensive line is, I know we graduated a bunch of guys, but, um, you know, Coach Troutwine and, and, and Coach Adazio, they've done a great job of developing those guys. Uh, and, and we run the football well. And then when you got a guy like uh, A.J. Dillon and, and, and Travis Levy and Benny Glines and, and um, you know, and D.B., uh, you know, you, you build your offense around that. And, and it is conducive to, to, to wearing a team out and playing with tempo. And, and frankly, if your opponent – uh, if, if your opponent is fatigued, it becomes easier to run football. And and I know in, in my s previous stops as a coordinator, uh, we've had success doing that, building it around the scheme. I know in Cincinnati we had some some great running backs and at times led the conference um, in rushing with with a guy named Isaiah Pete and a guy named George Wynn. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think it, it does have the you know the misconception of being throw first, but you can easily fit uh, a rushing centered offense into tempo offense. When you're going back to Washington State, are you pretty satisfied with the tempo or are you trying to bring up offense? Uh, they, they move fast. Uh, they, they, they did a good job of moving fast last year, and, and uh, that's evident on video. I mean, multiple, multiple, multiple times uh, you, you, see, you see defenses not getting lined up or get, just getting in their stances or snapping the football. You're always, always going to emphasize moving faster. Um, but th they've done a good job in the past, and we'll continue to, to emphasize that as, as a cornerstone of our offense. Anything else, Mike? Mike, thank you very much. We'll wrap things up today with uh, Eric Lewis. Thank you guys for, for staying. I know those guys were all very eloquent speakers. I'm sure that was – you guys do this every day. That's amazing to me. Uh, but I did want to thank you guys for, for coming. Uh, I'm really appreciative uh, for the opportunity by Coach Adazio. Uh, this is a great place. You know, I, I've only been here a few weeks, but it's been a, a, a great experience so far. Coach Sheridan's awesome to work for. Uh, Coach Reed as well and the defensive staff. Uh, so I'm excited to be here. I know everyone keeps asking about uh, – you know, replacing all the good players that, that we're losing in the secondary. You know, we have a lot of talent here. And, and those guys, are, you know, they feel they have a little chip on their shoulder, something to prove, and, and we're excited to, to get started here in spring ball and, and prove to everyone, you know, why they got here and what we can do here in the ACC. But um, go ahead, any questions? Questions for Eric. Talk about the physicality you're going to demand from your safeties, uh, not just coverage, but in run support. Okay. There's a standard that, that's been set here. It's nothing new, nothing that I need to emphasize any more than has been in the past. Coach Adazio believes in it. You heard Coach, Coach Sheridan talk about it. Uh, so we bring guys here to Boston College that, that are tough physical players. They've been that way since they were in Pop Warner probably in high school, and they're going to continue to be that way when they get to college and, and hopefully when they take the next step to the next level. But uh, physicality and, and toughness is something that we believe in as a, as a program. Uh, I believe in it as a coach. And it's a culture that's been here and is going to continue to uh, help us succeed here on defense. Have you talked to Coach Kevin Miller or any of his players about what made his tenure year so successful? I haven't talked to Coach Camp. I ran to him on the road one time recruiting. Uh, but more than anything, kind of like Coach Bajakian talked about, when you see the film, that, that speaks volumes. More than anything that anyone can tell you, you know, I've coached long enough. I've been at enough programs. I've been around football every day for my entire life. Uh, so. When I see the success, we, success we've had here on defense, you know, it's apparent because of the work ethic, the toughness, and, and kind of the standards uh, that this culture, you know, has been created through this culture uh, is permeated, you know, day in and day out. These kids know what to do. They know how to work, you know, and, and the new guys are just excited for the opportunity to prove their worth. That's good. That's easy. Hey, I'm good with that. Eric, thanks for All right. Thank you very much.